Taylor, 29 wins, the one loss to Chavez in March of 1990, at least certainly against an opponent the quality of Meldrick Taylor. 50 and a half isn't that difficult for him. He normally fights at 152. Of the three losses, two were earlier in his career, one by disqualification. You are a half inches taller, has eight inches more reach. Stunningly, uh, let's get ready to rumble. TNT Tandler. Terry Norris. Fight. Meldrick Taylor sprints from his corner. The speculation is that he'll his efforts for the knockout he wants to see. Hand tries to follow with the left. Pawing with the jab. Stunning statement. Clearly Meldrick Taylor wants to state that this will be a boxing. Norris slow to release before he makes himself available for counter punches. And Terry Norris is a good counter. Norris lands the right hand as they step apart, and now Terry Norris initiates. Both punchers landing effectively there. Did the start out. That was state of the art chance to throw the uppercut. And lest you be deceived into thinking that Melta, if you see red between his lips, it does not necessarily mean there's blood. It's too long, and he's quick with it. Norris's reach advantage, and trying to jab. Norris trying to come over the top with the right hand. Force. That is blood, I believe, now coming from Taylor's mouth already. Correctly, and they'll cause your lips to start bleeding prematurely, and you're not hurt. Against Norris's longer reach, Meldrick Taylor appears to have set up a good round. Rule for a few minutes, the first couple of rounds. Get him later on. Hit me two, I'll get you one later. George, what can Meldrick do to prevent... Now here is Norris in his most effective early in the round. A straight right has just fallen over. Round three, WBC super welter foreman between rounds. George Benson told Meldrick Taylor this Taylor got in a left hook that may have been his most effective blow. And now for the moment... this jab. If they had told him to hit and run away, he would have a better chance at this point. This is when he's extra confident. Good. On with his legs. Particularly if Norris, as we suspect might be the case, is open. There's the right again, sneaking over. And for the moment, the blind. Norris, I feel, is fighting the fight that Mildred Taylor should have been Okay, let's take a look. There's a nice the ear, so you can't hear your instructions that well. <laughs> and Meldrick doesn't seem to. Right hand punch well, landed for Meldrick well. Taylor as he stepped in. So again, right hand landed for Taylor. Good, solid left in close by Taylor. A right hand by No. Isn't it? It's Taylor Wobbly. Glenwood Brown. These are right hands by Norris that have done the damage. Just an easy shot. Plenty of time left in the round. Lou Duba yelling for Meldrick Taylor to clinch, but Meldrick keeps throwing leather. Meldrick is woozy on the ropes. Second knockdown. Complete. Here comes Terry Norris to try to lane to make. He's very close to stopping it, and there it is. Right. Top of the head. Strange that a middleweight fighter can knock you down in that fashion. Take a look at the second knockdown. We're gonna from some different angles. There was the, probably. Oh, there we go. Terry, no. <laughs>